Good morning, Cobras, and welcome to Play to Win, where we give you the latest in gaming and technology news. Today's episode marks the first installment of a three-part series on a special kind of video game called Sandbox or Open World Games. You ever sat down and thought about what life would be like if you could do absolutely anything you wanted to? If you could drive past red lights, jump off a plane, ride into the mountains on horseback, or maybe build and explore your own Lego-like universe? Open world games such as the ones we'll look at today were designed with just that mentality in mind. They were built to allow players to play the game at their leisure, going where they wanted at whatever time in whatever order. Recently, two of the most awaited installments in two open world series were released, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim and Saints Row III. Let's start off with an in-depth look at Skyrim from IGN. There's a big difference between open world games with lots of content, which many have, and those with a lot of creatively designed content like you'll find in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. The fifth version of Bethesda Game Studios' long-running role-playing series is an incredible game, a colossal fictional world that constantly surprises. Even after over 100 hours of play, you'll still uncover quests and items and characters that lead to undiscovered territory and unexpected results. Not only is Skyrim one of the best games of 2011, it's one of the best role-playing games ever made. <laughs> While it certainly doesn't share the same game world or even idea, Saints Row III mimics Skyrim's open world style and adapts it to a completely different set of characters and game world. Let's take a look at Saints Row III from GameSpot. Saints Row III won't impress you with knockout visuals, move you with an absorbing story, or engage you with challenging combat. What it does, better than just about any game before, is embrace the idea of an open world as a place for play constantly giving you access to awesome new toys and providing you with no shortage of opportunities to use them. Minecraft, a unique open world title with a focus on creativity, was also released recently. Let's go to IGN for their perspective on the game. No other video game has unleashed my creativity like Minecraft. I spent countless hours chipping away at blocks, gathering the necessary materials to complete the next masterpiece. I've also spent just as many hours exploring, spelunking through caves, and slashing my way through monsters with bravado. My character, my entire Minecraft world, constantly evolves into whatever I want it to be. I tell my own stories, I write my own destiny, and I bring my fantasies to life one block at a time. After years of being out in alpha and beta forms, we finally have an official release for Minecraft. If you've never played it before, now's the perfect time to start. Albeit different titles with no relation to each other save for their playstyle, Saints Row the Third, Minecraft, and Skyrim all share a sandbox style of gameplay that has become a staple of video game culture. But when did the earliest sandbox games appear? For how long has this style of gameplay really been around? Where must we go to find the game style's roots? Tune in to the next episode of Play to Win to find out. That's all we have for today. Let's take it back to the hosts on the set.